once it's up, if you let me know, I will. We can see your screen. You may go ahead. Okay, fantastic. So uh, thank you for having me, Afaladi. I will just walk through the eight, eight slides eight slide, uh, presentation. I, want to, I would like to take the audience through uh, on a journey of tariff regime in Nigeria. And that would be uh, me starting out by talking about what the, um, what the cost reflective, when, when we talk about cost of electricity, what is it made up of? Um, so the cost of electricity has three components to it. Uh, you have the Genco cost, the TCN cost, the DISCO cost, all this represents the value chain cost, which at the end of the day uh, is the retail tariff that you and I pay as customers. So 58% of all the revenues made in the, in, uh, from the value chain goes to the Jenkos who have obligations to their gas suppliers. You have the transmission company and you have distribution costs. What makes up those costs? Obviously, uh, you have the capital that needs to be put in. You have to have a depreciation of that capital. You have to have a return on that capital if you invest it. Uh, there's also the, the, the cost of gas that goes into it as well. And uh, yes, you see the exchange rate is, is, a, is a key aspect of the tariffs today because uh, gas supply is, uh, is, a, is a forex denominated product. And you also have a lot of the um, capital projects uh, that are, you know, uh, priced in dollars. So in the tariffs that you and I pay today, we have um, a forex component that needs to be recognized. Now, what this slide is speaking to is four parameters. Now, these four parameters are the aspects that actually impact our tariffs today. So the movement in these actually affect what your retail tariffs would be. And starting with the capacity, uh, we all know that uh, if, um, I mean, the, the, the more you have something, the, the higher the capacity or generation capacity we have, the unit price for that um, electricity will, will drop. So uh, what you see on the slide is what has been projected from the year 2012 and then 2013 when the privatization actually took place. So meaning the private sector uh, took over the, uh, the operations of the, of the, of the utility in the electricity market. And then uh, in, in 2019, the figure you see there, 3,453, is the average that the distribution companies were able to uh, take on and distribute. And then uh, what you have to the right, which is the last column, is what the tariff regime actually projected. Now, the ATC and C losses you see there in red is in simple terms, just speaking to the losses at the distribution end. That includes technical, which is definitely the lines, uh, you have commercial losses, which is energy theft. So if you have a meter and you're bypassing, you're actually stealing. Uh, and that goes into this number you're seeing here. And then you have the collection losses. Distribution companies, they bill, and not every one of us pay for the bills, is it? So all that in aggregate forms the losses at the distribution end. Forex is a key component, like I said earlier. So when Forex uh, at CBN or in the market is at an X number, then the expectation is that your tariff will be, you know, will be adjusted to reflect that. And then the last, no, the last uh, road that I have there is just to show you that at handover, what was the tariff? We had a tariff of 18 Naira or 19 Naira if you, if you, uh, if you, uh, you know, um, round it up. And what the cost reflective tariff at the time should have been 33 Naira. But we're not paying 33 Naira, we're paying 19 Naira. Now in 2019, what was the tariff we're paying? We paid 31 Naira, again, rounding it up, but what you should have been paying is 54 Naira. Now, what happens to that gap? The gap here, the gap, the gap here we're talking to will be the difference between the tariffs that you and I pay, uh, which the regulator allows, and the tariffs that should be, which is the cost reflective tariffs you hear about, and that cost reflective tariffs will take care of the entire value chain, as you saw. So the generation cost, the transmission cost, and the distribution cost are all in there. Now, if you look at this slide, the first bar is speaking to a cost reflective state. So when your tariffs are cost reflective, this is an example, you are expecting a 1.2 trillion now revenue in a particular year, and then this is distributed. However, the regulator has said, well, we do not want to charge the customers the full tariffs. So we would only allow some part of that, which is 30.8 Naira. So you can see there that 
the sector was supposed to benefit 1.2 trillion, but you only got 670, you're supposed to get 670, which the regulator allows. Now, if you look at the third column, what is happening there is that the ATC and C losses, which is the losses, so I'll keep it simple. When you hear losses of 50%, what that is saying is that uh, a disco is losing 50 cobble of every naira of kilowatt they sell. Now, in your tariffs today, the regulator has a different projection because it, is, it expects, the regulator expects the distribution companies to be much more efficient. So in their estimation, uh, for example, if you look at the, the previous slide, it's saying here that, uh, you know, the distribution companies should only be losing 28 cobble. But in reality, in 2019, they were losing 47 cobble, which is what I was referring to. So again, you can see how the losses and all these different parameters play a role in your tariffs. This graph is just showing you the difference between what is allowed as tariff for UNI to pay and what uh, should be, which is a cost reflective tariff. So the blue line you see there is a cost reflective tariff and this is being tracked, this is a trajectory from 2015 and the orange is what UNI have been paying from 2015. Now the gap you see in there is again the shortfall. And when you talk about tariff shortfall, then you ask the question, how is the tariff shortfall made up? So I'm supposed to get 1.2 trillion, but I am only allowed to get 670, uh, 670 billion. So who makes up that difference? Now, this is where we talk about the different government interventions. Uh, I'm sure you've heard about 213 billion from the Central Bank of Nigeria. You've heard about 701 billion. You've heard about 600 billion. And all this in aggregate comes to about 1.5 trillion. Now, where did all that money go? That entire money went to taking care of the shortfall you see here. So if there's a difference between what uh, I should be paying or what I'm, I'm allowed to collect as a distribution company and what you, the customer, should pay, which is the full cost of the value chain, somebody must fill that gap. So if customers don't pay for it, the federal government will have to step in. So what the federal government has done <clears throat> since 2015 is to step in and to fill that gap you see between the orange and the blue line. Now, what is happening here, if you, if you, if you see the, 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 the gap, we are moving up until 2019. And in, two, in 2021, there is a emerging there. What that is saying is that we're heading into a regime, as Afolabi introduced, called the service reflective tariffs. That service reflective tariffs is supposed to have you and I pay for full for, for the full cost of the entire value chain. So no more, there'll be no more tariff uh, shortfall uh, support from government. Uh, and that is how the whole service reflective tariff regime is supposed to work. Now, what should happen is that the distribution companies are supposed to provide different clusters in their network. So you do a cluster where you supply them four hours because that has been the average supply over time. Uh, there are clusters that will be given maybe 10 to 15 hours, some 16 hours, some 20 hours. So they're supposed to, in this new tariff regime, segregate their market along the service they are providing. So what, is, what happens is that if you are a customer in, um, in, in a band where you're getting four hours and you're paying 20 Naira, if you are moved to a 25 Naira band, which is a band that gets 15 hours supply a day, then your tariffs should change. So that is the whole idea uh, about the service reflective tariff. So meaning the tariff you pay would reflect the actual hours you're getting and the kind of service that the, the distribution companies will be offering. So this is what all this, in a nutshell, that is what the tariff uh, reflective tariffs, is, the service reflective tariffs is speaking to. Now, let me quickly take you through, uh, you know, a memory lane of tariff regime starting in 2013. Now, if you remember, I told you about the four parameters that affect tariffs. And anytime those parameters change, then your tariffs have to change. So that includes your capacity. What is generation capacity? If, if I projected 4,000 and I'm only getting 3,000, then the tariffs should reflect that. And if you have generation that is at 4,000 and it drops down to 3,000, what that means is that your tariffs should go up. And the same thing with ATC and C losses. You know, the losses change uh, with time, but that is something that, I mean, it's cast in stone in the sense that there's some commitments that the distribution companies have made when they actually bought these companies. But there's a huge mismatch today between what the distribution companies have as their losses and what the regulator is projecting. So a lot of this have led to the 
uh, liquidity crisis you hear of today. And obviously we talk about Forex. If the Forex changes, then your tires have to move in that direction as well. So when we started in 2013, we didn't have a baseline losses study. What is a baseline losses study? That was a study that was supposed to establish what was the actual losses in the system. We didn't have that at privatization. You only had a number that the government advised the bidders and they bidded on that, but they gave them a year. So in 2014, as you will see, baseline studies were conducted and the losses were established. And what was the loss established? It was 50% loss. So what that meant is that at hand, at, in 2014, uh, in 2013, when the, the new owners took up the company, what the projection they made was a 28 Naira, 28 Cobra loss per Naira of kilowatt sold. But in 2014, when the baseline losses was done, they were losing 50 Cobra per Naira of kilowatt sold. In 2015, what happened? The tariff started out with uh, a government intervention of 214 billion. What was that for? That was again to fill the, the difference between what customers were paying at the time and what customers should be paying based on the fact that the regulator at that time had adjusted the tariffs to reflect, uh, you know, reflect um, the forex at the time, to reflect uh, the capacity at the time, to reflect the losses that were established. That all happened in 2015. Obviously, there were other issues around some of the distribution companies, uh, you know, filing for force majeure and declaring that. I don't want to go into that because we are going to focus on tariffs. Then in 2016, obviously, there should have been a tariff, a minor tariff review. So what a minor review does, which is every six months, is that it ensures that your, your tariffs are in line with the economic indices. That's inflation, uh, that is the forex, and of course, again, I, I'm happy on, uh, on capacity. But in 2016, that didn't happen. And if you all recall, in 2016, there was a devaluation in our, in our currency, but the tariffs were not, were not adjusted to reflect the economic indices. Then there was no cost reflective tariff. Then this went on in 2017. In 2017 as well, we did not have a tariff review. So we were still paying the same tariffs. Uh, the, the distribution companies were uh, operating on a tariff that had 198 naira to a dollar but they were operating on a 306 to a dollar. So, I mean, just make, do the mathematics. It's very simple. You cannot operate in that way. It's hard for you to seek finance if there's a lot of mismatch in your you know, commercial arrangements. In 2018, again, there was a tariff freeze. There was no, tariff, there was no cost reflective tariff, but what happened was that government now decided that instead of tariffs going up, we will, put in more money. So the government provided 701 billion to support tariffs. So because there was a tariff shortfall between what we were paying and what you should be paying. So federal government said we will inject 701 billion and that's what happened in 2018. In 2019, you had the same issue. Last year, uh, again, there was a tariff shortfall because the government decided that you and I should not be paying cost reflective tariffs. We should only pay uh, the allowed tariffs by the regulator they again approved 600 billion. That again went into solving or trying to address the shortfall that you and I were not allowed to pay and government took up that responsibility. And in 2020, this year, uh, the federal government is saying, you know, and you all know what's happening, COVID-19 has happened, our oil, the, the oil crisis in terms of the prices that have dipped, uh, you know, our budgets, you know, that, that have, that had to be, uh, you know, adjusted to reflect the, 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 the drop, the drop in, in oil prices. Uh, so there's that thinking that, you know what, we cannot continue to subsidize the, the tariff uh, for the, uh, for the sector. However, what should happen is that the distribution companies should uh, be able to um, uh, allocate tariffs or charge tariffs that reflect service that they deliver, hence the service reflective tariffs. So today, or from next month, the understanding or what we expect is that uh, you and I will be paying, according 